Good morning, everyone. This is Captain Ando. I'm the Dark Star Strategist. I'm here to talk a little bit about board matas, the Vidar, and how to properly crew and strategize around these to increase your effectiveness and your survival rate against these. Now, for those who are not aware, the bar board matas come in a series of systems that is over by Federation Space. So when you go to Federation Space, if you look over here, you'll see a cluster, you'll see a big board cube, and it's got several different zones. The first zones are 25s. These have very instantly responding uh, uncommon board cubes at level 25. These things are extremely easy. Um, people can pretty much one-shot these if they have a badar of a decent tier and a decent crew. These are not a problem for most people. And the way they're stacked up here they don't have a lot of health here they'll die quickly the vidar will get a major damage bonus and they are their penetration and defense stats are also set up like a battleship they have very high shieldy piercing and very high armor so this is very well suited to the vidar's interceptor statistics you should be able to deal with these no problem whatever um, how whatever group you bring as long as you have a Vidar and as long as it's crewed properly now these ones here are rares they require more first of all they require more starts to go so they require four for every go time but they're a little bit different in the reward structure too they also get active nanoprobes rather than inert so there's better rewards overall from these You'll definitely want to take advantage of the um, these if you've got a decent group together. Now, also, they are built like a battleship. They have more health. They do a lot more damage than the first, but if you have a decently crewed group, it shouldn't be a big trouble for you. Um, and it's also built like a battleship with high armor and high shield-piercing stats. So, again, the Madar is ideally suited to this role now the epics here this is something where you want to start to bring quite a few people with t9s so the epics they do have first of all again they have a lot more active nanoprobes that's something you can take away that's a good thing active nanoprobes they're good for promoting board officers you definitely want to take advantage of that now um stat wise it's got a lot more health 60 million it does quite a lot more damage, so this is where T9s become critical to uh, defeating this. You'll want a, at least a five-man team. Sorry about the pop-ups here. Um, five-man team to go in with this. Again, it has high shield piercing stats, high armor stats, so it's built like a battleship. And so you want to get a five-man that's at least a five man with uh mainly t9 vidars to go in after this if you have a very stacked team with very strong vidars you might get away with bringing a few people to lower tier but ideally you want to bring a group with everything now with the mega cubes they're a little bit different here so there's three different types you'll see a tractor beam you'll see disruptors and you'll see a photon cannon now these are actually built a little different here first of all the rewards, again, they're inert nanoprobes, not so great. So it's really not a lot of return on investment except for the event itself doing this. Now, the way these work here, however, is this one, the photon cannon specifically have a high armor piercing rating. So this is basically an interceptor. Now, you'll notice when you look at the stats, the armor piercing is high. So that would be not something you want to bring a battleship again. It's not so much a problem for a Vidar. Um... And the shield deflect and you'll notice all these stats are relatively the same so this is something you could reasonably take a group of vidars in and kill with a decent amount of likelihood of uh success tractor beams again the same basic thing here now these have um higher accuracy so this is the one you want to typically avoid with a group of vidars and you want to take a six-man group in, all T9, very properly crewed, which we're going to get into here shortly. Because they have a high accuracy rating, um, 
I do not recommend going in with a group against these because it's going to kill you a lot quicker. However, the disruptors specifically, actually these ones, I, looks like they do have active nanoprobes. I think they had to kill them first, if I remember correctly. So this is good against explorers. Um, that's not the one I was looking at. Or was it? But, uh... Anyway, these things have high shield piercing stats and pretty low accuracy. So that's the one you'd really want to take up against. Now, all their defense stats are basically the same. So they have a little higher shield deflection overall, but armor, shield deflection, and dodge are all pretty much identical. Um, might get a little more bang for the buck with Kang because of that. I doubt it. I think you'll probably still get better luck with... Uh, Charvetic, which we're going to talk about here shortly. So with this, you'd want to bring in a T9 group that has five damage dealers and one crit mitigation crew specifically, which I'm going to get into here shortly. With the Bedars, you don't want to go in with anyone who probably has less than <coughs> 1.2 million power. So this is... These are pretty unforgiving. I have one shot these in the past, but it was with a very high power group who were crewed very well. Now, crewing specifically, you want to be very uh, specific with. So, first of all, look at the Bedar itself here and some of its characteristics. It's got three different weapons here. It's got the first thing is a phaser turret. It's actually an energy weapon on these things. Um... It's got a charge time of one and a recharge time of two. So that what that means to you is it's going to fire the first round and every odd round. So the photon torpedoes, it's pretty much a swap thing. It's a kinetic weapon. It's got a charge time two, but it fires every round after that. So it's going to get, uh, it's going to go the second round and every round thereafter. And the last thing is the railgun. This thing is a beast mode. It's something that will hit for multiple million damage it's kind of what you count on to destroy when a whole bunch of adars fire this at once you can quickly uh whittle down these armadas to nothing in almost no time flat <coughs> they take three rounds to charge and another three rounds to recharge so it'll only go in round three round six if you get that far and so on so forth now as an interceptor you will have very good uh very good dodge by comparison so you want things of low accuracy to go after and likewise your arm your uh armor or your armor piercing is also your highest stat so boosting that as high as possible that's what i recommend doing when you set up your crews here what i recommend doing Overall, I have not done this, but you'll notice here you got two stat officers here. Charvanek, whose ability, sorry, this is getting used to the new recording software. It has health based capabilities as well as five of ten. God, this thing's annoying. Has health based abilities in her captain ability. Now, you also have six of ten who has attack-based capabilities with his uh, defenses are relevant. So when you crew your officers, you want to stack as much um, attack and health as, po as possible. I'm fairly balanced. I do have a preference towards attack, which is a good thing. Um, but you want to try to get these stats as high as possible. I am just showing this to sh uh, set up here to show you some of the crews that you're going to use here. So first of all, what I'd recommend... You definitely want 5 of 10 as your captain. With her weaponry as a relevant, that's going to give you the maximum mitigation against these armadas. <coughs> They're not going to hit you nearly as hard and destroy you nearly as quickly with that. 6 of 10 gives you his, his defenses are a, a relevant capability. That's what just stacks your penetration as high as possible. That means you'll do as much damage to the... Hall as possible. These 
battles in typical are no longer than six rounds, even the epics. Now, the exception to that is a little bit the Mega Cubes. They last a little bit longer, but your survival depends on your ability to A, mitigate damage, and B, penetrate effectively. Now, the last officer you can use is one of your Triangle Officers, so Charvenet, Kang, or Marcus. I personally recommend, if, if your Charvenet isn't very leveled up, maybe you want to put one that you have more promoted a few more times in there. Um, but Charbonac, based on her having high armor piercing capability, which remember these armadas are, their defense stats are like battleships. You want to have that armor piercing as high as possible. That's going to maximize the damage you do against these targets, except for the mega cubes, which it really doesn't matter. It's going to be all three stats are pretty much on par with itself. So then it's just plussed up to your... Vidara, which already has higher <coughs> armor penetration stats naturally. So that's what you're going to want to do here for the crew most of the time. Now the last thing you're going to want to do is set up someone as a crit mitigation build. So this is going to be a little bit different than what you got here. So this one's focused on 9 of 10 as your captain. And because she is a command level officer, you cannot put... 6 of 10 side by side with her and expect to get the full bonus. So I would put 7 of 10 as well as you could put 5 of 10 there or you could also put 8 of 10 there. Those are some of your two options that you can run to get the maximum mitigation, crit mitigation. Because what you want to do is you want to stack that up to 30%. So when you do that, you'll notice you get a full 30%. That means these armadas will not be able to crit anyone in your group. And that person is going to be key to your group surviving longer. So this is something you're going to want for the epic cubes. You're going to need it for the mega cubes. So if you if we get a six-man team of for mega cubes, you will, we will need someone to run this crew. And typically that is either A, the weakest Vidar, so the lowest power tier 9 Vidar in the case of Mega Cubes, or a person who doesn't have 5 of 10 or 6 of 10 could also use that. You're going to need that because otherwise it's going to flat out one crit in the case of the Mega Cubes is going to one-shot somebody. And in the case of Epics, it's going to do a lot of damage. And if it happens to be a weak player, it could also one-shot them as well. So that's the general premise behind setting up the Bedar, how to tackle these different types of Borg armadas, and what you need to do to strategize and plan around these things. Plan these attacks carefully. The uh, Just wasting them haphazardly. You're going to run out of directives eventually. And it's got a milestone event. You're going to want to get in as many as possible. <coughs> and if you just burn them early and burn them haphazardly, you're not going to get the at nearly as well far in the event. So you want to try to get, get these knocked out as quickly as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. If you can get in Apex, that'll get you there quickly rares fairly quickly and commons you're gonna have to do quite a few that way you're gonna be sitting doing armadas all day so my recommendation is to get in the big ones with the well-planned group and that way you can knock it out efficiently it'll also bring the alliance leaderboards up quite a bit higher it's advantage for everybody so any questions please ask in game chat or discord this is captain and i am the dark star strategist signing out